all, that's Kerala, um, with the episode theme as Cricket, Curries, and Kadamo, with our very eminent host for the series, uh, which is All That's Kerala, with Mr. M.P. Joseph, and the today's guest, Dr. Raghavan. We at City Book Leaders, uh, a book-based knowledge exchange, a privilege to partner um, this series with Kerala Museum, and I have Aditi Nair from the museum with us today. I understand we are in a situation where Kerala is going through tremendous uh, floods and also the recent news of uh, the crash has made in, uh, things very difficult for all of us. Uh, I would request everyone for a one minute of silence to pray for uh, all the departed souls and also for the betterment of Kerala before we start this session. Just 60 seconds of pure bliss silence, please. May God and Almighty be with everyone in Kerala and all the parts of the world and in the country where we are facing uh, challenges, but challenges definitely are part of life and we have to overcome and we have to tackle them, move ahead. And uh, we now take you all to this chat on the backwaters of God's own country. And to proceed ahead, I would now introduce and welcome Mr. M.P. Joseph, who is our host for the series. Uh, to many people who have joined in here today, uh, especially from Kerala and other parts of the world, he doesn't need any introduction. Uh, but let me tell you, Mr. Ampi Joseph is originally from the 1978 batch IAS, Kerala Kader. He was earlier in the 1977 batch of the Indian Police Service. He holds a master's degree in HRD from the Global Development Institute of University of Manchester and a master's degree in solid state physics from the Cochin University of Science and Technology. Mr. Joseph was until recently advisor to the government, labor reforms, industrial reforms, uh, in the rank of additional chief secretary, government of Kerala, and executive vice chairman of uh, Bhavnam Foundation Kerala, a public sector non-profit company fully owned by the government of Kerala. He has had an illustrious career in the IAS as sub-collector of Trichur um, and the longest serving um, as the labor commissioner in the state. He was also Managing Director of the Overseas Development and Employment Promotion Corporation. He has chaired various boards, and he's also the author of a lovely book, My Driver to Long, which he wrote during his ILO posting at Cambodia, which is a masterpiece in itself when you really want to understand the connect and want to see what Cambodia is from the eyes of an Indian. And uh, that's how we first hosted him as our keynote author when we did our session for the chapter in Cochin. And we are privileged to have him here to host this series, which is a bi-monthly series. And today he will also announce what all hosts we have in the future. And today, um, our, our guest for the session is yet again a very, very fascinating personality. He represents Kerala and the versatility and um, what interesting aspects of uh, uh, Kerala that he brings with him. K.N. Raghavan was born in Kochi, uh, where he had his schooling. Having completed an MBBS degree from Government Medical College, Kozikor, he was doing postgraduate studies in physical medicine and rehabilitation at Thiruvananthapuram when he decided to sit for the UPSC and join the IRS. In the course of his career, Raghavan has worked in places as varied as Bosur, Coimbatore, Kozikor, Kochi, Mumbai, and Singapore. Like most Indians, Mr. Raghavan is passionate about cricket a BCCI accredited umpire. He has umpired one day internationals. He writes very often on cricket um, as a professional writer uh, and editor to, to many of the dailies. He has also authored two other books, The World Cup Chronicle and Vanishing Shangri-La, History of Tibet and the Lai Lama in 20th century. And his book, which is on Indochina discord, is one of the most remarkable books. And I guess he's a marathon runner as well. And presently, he is the CEO of the choir board. Uh, it's truly a privilege to introduce both of you, sir. I now hand over this virtual stage and the mic to both of you.
to take us through the backwaters of Kerala and introduce to us those hidden gems we have always been cherishing about. Over to you, please. Thank you so much, uh, Mohit. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be back with Mohit, a man whom I met about a year ago, I think. Uh, and for the first time, I think he called me over to, to a program for uh, familiarizing a book by uh, Mr. R. Gopalakrishnan, who was then the, who was the uh, executive director of uh, Ta, uh, Tata Sons. Uh, R. Gopalakrishnan is somebody whom I don't have to introduce. There's a book he wrote, Crash. And that was the first time I met uh, Mohit. Then our, our relationship has really grown. Uh, so when he asked me to anchor or, or coordinate or chair a series like this, all that scale I chat along the backwaters, I could uh, not say no. It's a pleasure for me. It's a privilege for me. Welcome all of you. I think uh, lots of people have joined. Uh, and welcome everybody from Kerala, from India, and from all over the world who are joining this. Uh, this is going to be, as Mohit said, uh, a twice monthly pro. Uh, and uh, today is the first inaugural uh, session that we have. We have meeting in very unfortunate circumstances, especially for Kerala. We have had two tragedies at, uh, on the 7th. Uh, the, the, the landslide first at Rajamala, where I believe over 30 people have died so far, and uh, many over two dozen are missing. And then the crash, the first time there's been a crash with deaths in Kerala, as far as uh, you know, in, in Kori Code, 18 killed the pilot. Uh, the, uh, Captain Deepak was in Sati, and the co pilot, both of them. Uh, well, it was, it was a tragedy, but the tragedy also showed the other side of Kerala, where uh, you know, everybody came together. Within minutes, the, 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 uh, the rescue operations were on. The local people from Kondoti, bless them, they came in. They saved many lives, I'm sure. Doctors and nurses in the hospitals. The taxi drivers in the, in the airport, the normally uh, very uh, difficult to deal with taxi drivers uh, uh, of uh, the, the airport taxis, drove their taxis freely, two wheelers were used, every possible means of transportation was used, including the ambulance drivers. So today is also, it's also, uh, uh, the tragedy brought perhaps the best in us as it brought, uh, in Kerala as it brought the best in, uh, in Kerala during the, 19, the 2018 floods. And later last year, the floods uh, last year in August. Uh, and similarly, the tragedy at Raja Mala where many, many poor people uh, people uh, living on the uh, on, on the mountain sides, hill sides, have been killed. Uh, it's it's a great tragedy for us, and it's good that uh, that uh, Mohit uh, decided that we should have a minute silence. Uh, you should remember them in our thoughts, in our prayers. This program is going to be uh, an interactive program. I would like uh, comments from all of you, questions uh, to to all of us, uh, to your views. Uh, during the program, we are not. We are going to have a. Uh, we are going to have a Q and A session, question and answer session at the end. But uh, when you feel uh, you need to step in, especially at the end of every segment, we've got three segments. One segment is on cricket. The other segment is on QC and these, and the third is on cardamom, which is really a segment on spices uh, in Kerala. So between after each segment or whenever you think you want a question, I would welcome a question. Anything that uh, that uh, a comment. So that this is interactive. I, I, it's, 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 I, I would like it to be a participative, participative uh, uh, sort of uh, interactive sort of program. So please, uh, uh, please uh, uh, chip in, and I'm sure we can we can uh, bring you on the screen and you can ask your questions. We would uh, we would love that. I would particularly like to thank uh, uh, before I come to uh, Dr. Raghavan. I'd like to thank the Kerala Museum. Atiti is here. Atiti Nair is here. She is, uh, they are one of these, uh, one of the participants. It's co-jointly co organized by City Book Leaders, uh, which is led by Mohit and by uh, the Co Kerala Museum in Cochin in Adapalli. Everybody would know it. Uh, uh, that is uh, being led by Atiti. So uh, thank you so much uh, for figuring this through and putting us all together in this, in this program. Welcome, uh, Dr. Raghavan. I think uh, 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 it's, it's a pleasure to see uh, you, uh, I mean, in every way, you, your face is so charming and smiling, uh, apart from that you're a doctor, apart from the fact that you're a cricket enthusiast, apart from the fact that you are a 
you are a, a cricket umpire, which uh, I think you must be perhaps the only bureaucrat or one of those rare bureaucrats who is also umpired in first class crickets. I believe you started it uh, in 1992 or something. Uh, correct me if my years are wrong, but if 1991 perhaps, and then later on uh, in 19, uh, and you, 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 you sort of uh, uh, umpired, umpired in cricket for about uh, 22 years and left it only in 2013. And cricket is something I think that's in your blood because you've been writing about it, you've been speaking about it. So we thought that, uh, yes, apart from your other things as an author, as someone who loves food, uh, particularly Talashedi food, I'll ask you later why you like Talashedi food uh, uh, so much and why you would like to speak about it. Uh, uh, but uh, being a cricket enthusiast, I thought that is, uh, th there's no right person to begin the series than someone like you. So let's move on. Uh, welcome, uh, Dr. Rajivan. Uh, before I actually, um, uh, later on, there are three segments, as I said, the first segment is cricket. The next segment is going to be on the cuisine and particularly the cuisine of Malabar, north of Kerala. Kerala is a varied cuisine, people know it, but Talashedi is particularly special and uh, Raghavan will be talking about that. And then we'll move on to spices because Kerala ultimately is known for spices. Uh, Vasco da Gama landed here in 1498 when the spice route, the, the original spice route was blocked after Constantinople was uh, captured uh, by the Ottoman Empire. So, uh, so the spice is part of that. It has been there for 4,000, 5,000 years. So we'll come to that and, and end with, if you don't mind, because you are uh, the executive director of Rubber Board, we'll uh, end with rubber, because that should also be something that you are uh, very, very, uh, very uh, familiar with. As I said, there's going to be an interactive session and uh, any questions at the, at the, during, the, uh, during the period of our talk is most welcome. If you have any questions now, we can begin on that. Uh, but if you don't have any questions, let me start off with Raghavan and cricket. India loves cricket. Uh, so that's the best way to begin it. But then since, since there are no questions, let me put a question to the audience. Uh, does anyone know where the first cricket match in India was played? The only the clue I can give is that it was not Calcutta. Does anyone know? Uh, Mohit, do you have a way of uh, getting people to answer? Yeah, everyone can answer in the chat box. It's open. Yeah, and then then you can uh, you, you can you can also let them uh, uh, come on the screen and ask it visually. I mean, answer it visually. Yeah, yeah, we can we can give them the sound. Yeah, we can. Anybody? No. Okay. No, since Girish Mumbai. says Calicut, Veer says Mumbai, Ajay says Mumbai. So what's the right answer? It is not Mumbai. We'll go to the Dr. Raghavan for the right answer. I think uh, it's not Mumbai, definitely. Uh, Raghavan, <laughs> start by, I mean, if you answer this wrongly, uh, you can't, of course. Uh, you have the correct answer, don't you? Which no, I, I'll just start off with... Uh... A different this thing about the Kerala this thing. So that will give a clue to the audience as to how that. Right, okay. You can answer the question as Raghun speaks. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for the wonderful words. Actually, uh, Kerala is uh, not one of the first states that come to mind when you talk cricket. I, I'm going to stop there, Raghun, for a minute because Mr. Hormi Staragan, IPS, who was the Director General of RAW, has answered the question co correctly. Uh, Mohit, will you, will you give the wish, uh, mic and the screen to... Uh, Dr. Harmi Saragan, please. Uh, I'm just doing that. Yeah. Sir, will you come on the screen and answer that? Dr. Harmi Saragan? Yeah, he's, he's here. He's joining. Me. I just noted him to be the panelist. We're just waiting for him to come on. Right. Mr. Armis, you are there? Sir, are you there? I think uh, some network issue okay. has been dropped. Okay. Shall we move on to Raghavan again before yeah. uh, we... Uh, there's another answer from Ramachandran Tripunitara. That's not the right answer. Anyway, that's pretty close. Uh, Raghavan, over to you. I will not interrupt. Yes, thank you, sir. In fact, uh, both answers are relevant, so I'll come to that 
regarding telicheri and regarding tripunathra tripunathra also has its own place in the history of the game uh, regarding telicheri sir uh, the interesting fa- facet is that no other person that arthur wellesley later uh, better known as the duke of wellington had initiated cricket in kerala and do in telicheri where the first matches were played now uh, what happened was that during those days when he he was supposed to the commander of the uh, army for protecting the british east india company in in malabar they started the concept of playing cricket and in unlike in other parts where uh, the brits just played among themselves here they also tried to involve the locals locals particularly those people who used to wash clothes the dobies and those people who used to uh, uh, the laundry work they were the first people who sort of helped out and then started playing the game so kerala like lagan is it sir a bit like lagan a bit like lagan but then so the cricketing history of kerala goes back to the early uh, part of the 19th century So as a mark of that, in 2002, uh, Mr. J.K. Mahendra, who hails from North Kerala, Kannur, he had organized a match between. As a mark of that, in 2002, uh, Mr. J.K. Mahendra, who hails from North Kerala, Kannur, he had organized a match between India and Sri Lankan side in 2002 at Telicheri to mark sort of the 200 years of the first match being played. Uh, Telicheri is a very interesting place because you again have another cricket connection which comes in after that because Colin Cowdery. the former england captain he learned his first lessons so as to say uh, in the grounds of kannur and talasheri again because his father was a planter and he had worked in the nilgiris uh, uh, kunur and also in uh, kannur so that is the first connection that comes between cricket and kerala then what happened was that in 1951 regarding tripunathara the first ever limited over match in world was held in tripunathara those days cricket used to be played uh, longer duration three day matches five day matches we before that we used to have the timeless test where after 10 days of cricket there was no result at which point it was redu- uh, decided to have a time frame of five days and then we had the three day matches also in the first class level but in tripurthara mr kelapan tambran saw that these two day matches were not producing results so he decided to have one day match with limited number of overs and uh, with no over restrictions amongst the bowlers this was the first time that the puja noko tournament you know in 1951 had the limited overs matches to look at it the first first class uh, limited over match was held in england between derbyshire and leicestershire in 1962 so maybe there are a couple of areas where kerala was ahead of the pack so far as cricket was concerned but unfortunately after that well the pace didn't sustain well we have two monsoons one of which we are uh, uh, the seeing the effects of that now then there is a retreating monsoon so for the most part of the cricket season almost from june july till in november or early mid december the, the small strip of land is swamped with rain so you don't have time for players to come out and play the game you you you, you don't get the good atmosphere for that plus the fact that for a long time we did not invest in the proper infrastructure of having turf wickets we used to play cricket almost entirely on matting wickets you may be surprised to know that even when cochin organized the first international matches outside cochin we did not have any facility for turf wickets when i started umpiring i did all my umpiring on matting wickets when i saw turf wicket it was first time i umpired a board match so that that sort of limitation handicap was there for the kerala kerala players till the early part of the present century by which time better facilities and amenities came up and now we are producing better players so this is or i say the first match yes the first limited over match so some point in the history where kerala has definitely contributed and then player wise is as we come along the line we had Well, there's a player called Balan Pandit. I don't know how many of the present generation would have heard of Balan Pandit. I will interrupt you for a minute, sir. Uh, Dr. Harmi Staragan has joined us. Thank you, sir, for the right answer. Uh, uh, Talasheri, Talicheri is the first uh, town or cricket ground, a uh, place in India where 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 cricket was played 200 years ago. So, thank you so much. Would you like to add to that, uh, uh, Mr. Taragan, Harmi, Dr. Taragan? Dr. Amis, you will have to unmute yourself. Seems you are muted. You go to yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Amis. You will have to unmute yourself. Seems you are muted. Yeah, I have unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Amis. You will have to unmute yourself. Yeah, I just want to mention that. I have unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Amis. You will have to unmute yourself. I think, sir, you are also yeah, playing it on your other side. i was one of the organizers of the uh, bicentenary match in 2002 telicheri i was one of the organizers of the bicentenary match in 2002 telicheri 
Thank you. I think we are having some audio issues, so uh, I'll move on back to Raghavan. Raghavan was speaking about Balan Pandit. Balan Pandit was one of the first cricketers uh, of, of the modern times, I'm not speaking of 200 years ago, that, uh, that Kerala produced. Before you speak about Balan Pandit, there's, a, there's, uh, there's something I'd like to tell you, uh, Raghavan. Balan Pandit, my neighbor in the village of uh, Walluvali, he uh, stayed across us, across the road. Uh, Walluvali is a village uh, where I come from. It is close to Parur. It's between Varapura and Parur. And Balan Pandit was a, was, a, was, a, was a neighbor. And I used to be in awe of him because I used to play a lot of cricket when I was young. Uh, go ahead, uh, Dr. Sir, uh, Balan Pandit uh, cut his cricketing teeth outside the state. He played for Kathiawar. In fact, if you look at cricket history, you will find that the highest score by Indian in first class cricket is 443 by Bhavasaw Nimbalkar. He played for Maharashtra against Kathiawar. And our Balan Pandit was the wicket keeper of Kathiawar during that match. But after that, once Kerala Cricket Association was formed, Mr. Colonel Godavar Maharaja, who was a patron, president and everything of the association during the early years, he invited Mr. Pandit to come to Kerala and start playing here. And in 1959, he scored 262 runs against Andhra Pradesh, which was the highest score by a Kerala till Srikumaran Nair hit a century in the first decade of the present, uh, hit a triple century in the first decade of the 21st century. So, Balan Pandit had contributed a lot. In fact, for a long time, Balan Pandit was Mr. Kerala Cricket. Then we had Mr. J.K. Mahendra coming in. The schoolboy side which went to England in, first ever schoolboy side which went to England in 1967. J.K. Mahendra from Kannur was a member of that. That side is unique in that it had a lot of great players like uh, it had Egna Solkar, it had Surindra Marnath, Mohindra Marnath, Saeed Kirmani and that side did not lose even a match. Surindra Marnath won the match by hitting two sixes in the final over. So, he was part of that side. But unfortunately, when it came to Ranjit Trophy, again, we couldn't perform much. One was the fact that we had Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Hyderabad. Three strong th sides here. So, it was always a competition between Kerala and Andhra who would not become the last in the pool. But as we came to the 80s, we were fortunate to have a very good player who came up. That is Anand Parmanathan. Anand Padmanathan took around 344 wickets in Ranjit Trophy. An excellent leg spinner who would have played for India, but for the fact that his career clashed with that of Anil Kumble. If you have somebody like Kumble uh, as a contemporary, then you don't get much of a chance for playing international cricket. But when it came to the present century, Kerala was lucky to have produced a couple of fast bowlers. That is, was Tinu Yohannan was the first Malayali Malayali to make its debut for Kerala. He did that in 2001, followed by Sri Shand, who of course is the best known among the Kerala bowlers. But again, one small anecdote. Uh, little known fact is that whenever India has won the Cricket World Cup, 83, London, 2007, South Africa, T20, and 2011 in Mumbai, there was always a Malayali in the squad. Oh, we know about Sri Shand being there in 2007 and 11, but in 1983, there was a Sunil Walson, who was the left arm uh, fast bowler who played for Delhi. He had its roots in Delhi Cherry. So, the idea is that if India wants to win the World Cup, ensure that there's a Malayali in the side. So, that is, with that, I'll pass the mic back to you, sir. So oh, That's wonderful. Uh, tell me something. Mahindra doesn't sound like a very Malayali name. Uh, but you say he was playing in the Kerala team. Was he a Malayali Malayali or was he uh, somebody who came from outside? And... No, uh, J.K. Mahindra. J.K. Yeah. Mahindra. You, you okay. can say Mahindra, it's, Mahindra. it's not Mahindra. Mahindra. He is from Kanu, a business family. He later settled down in Chennai. Right. Again, one more facet which I would like to point out before I conclude on the cricket part is that earlier cricketers from Kerala used to go and uh, play in Chennai because we didn't have turf wickets. Then uh, Tinu and Sri Shant had their training in the Pace Foundation of, set up by MRF for training fast bowlers. So Kerala cricket always was sustained by the infrastructure that was there in uh, outside the state. But Sanju Samson is sort of the first player who has come from Delhi. He's had his early cricketing lessons in Delhi, but he made Trivandrum his home. So if Sanju gets, he's, he's already on the fringes of the Indian side. He has played uh, matches for the side also. But once he becomes a full-time player, which I hope will happen soon, he will become the first player who has come in the reverse way of came to Kerala, played for the state, utilized infrastructure here, and the first batsman sort of to reach the Indian side. As a, uh, he's also a wicket keeper. So, I would say that uh, Kerala is coming of age so far as cricket is concerned and more and more players should be uh, playing for the country soon. Raghavan, there's a question from Sri Kumar Raghavan, your namesake. 
what would be the reason why Keralaites don't fare well in national cricket despite despite the early initiators we have had? We have had a two hundred year old history, uh, but what happened? Is not the first first reason is what I would say because. earlier the cricket season would be from let's say from uh, july august till february and the ranji trophy the first class cricket uh, most of the initial matches would get over by november december by which time kerala would not have recovered from the monsoons so that is point one second we didn't have proper infrastructure see we, we, we need to have good infrastructure to have the game uh, played uh, to play the game at the highest level as i said we didn't have turf wickets third and most important the opportunity for the players uh, uh, talented youngsters to showcase their talents and come up so i i feel that in the years to come more and more kerlites will start playing on the national scene and some more will go to the international scene very true uh, uh, what you said about cricket not being played by uh, play, being played in, in the villages now walluvalli where uh, balan pandit and i come from at the village and when i used as a youngster used to speak about cricket there those days not now uh, they used to call me a kirkan now kirkan in malayalam means somebody who is a mad guy <laughs> so of course things have changed everybody speaks of cricket now and i can see the interest of cricket amongst uh, uh, amongst uh, youngsters amongst even very old people uh, who have understood the game is a very complex game the americans still can't play it uh, but uh, our uh, our our old and young have taken to it so uh, thank you so much before i move do you think you spoke about the monsoons as being one of the barriers against promoting cricket in the you think uh, covered stadiums are an answer they are expensive of course but covered stadiums during the monsoons i i would rather say that have more indoor cricket facilities so that that would be the answer because now we have the facilities uh, in kerala but early it was not there you have indoor facilities and the players can keep practicing round the year otherwise you have to wait for the grounds to dry up so we have more indoor training facilities where the players can keep playing matches covered stadiums might be a difficult proportion given the nature of the game so uh, unlike tennis which is played for a specific uh, short duration it will be difficult to have covered stadium for cricket though maybe it might happen in future we we don't know how the world will be in the post covid conditions now we are having matches played without anyone in the stadium and people watching the game only solely on television uh, on television so these changes might come in but right now what association could do is to have more of indoor training facilities for players so that they can keep playing the game even when the monsoon is there so that that would help them to stay in shape and to sharpen their skills very true uh, dr harmi sir again mentions that uh, dr ck bas played in ranji trophy for kerala in the in the 60s if i remember correctly he was a product of the trivandrum medical college Uh, you you studied at the Trivandrum Medical College too, did you not? For some, I studied in Calcutta. Calcutta, okay. Uh, moving on, uh, 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 you know, uh, you spoke about cricket. How do you think cricket is going to be post COVID? I'm sorry, you spoke about COVID. So, what do you think COVID, cricket is going to be post COVID? Well, what we are seeing in England these days are the test matches between England and West Indies first, and then England and. Uh, Uh, Pakistan that is being held currently are 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 an indication for the future because uh, we we have to at least for the next one year uh, as things stand now have to understand the importance of preserving the biosecure protocol and then uh, the scene of uh, idea of spectators coming to the stadium to watch matches might be something which will take. much more time to come and to have this protocol down now it is not just sufficient to have the matches at the international level which is good for the viewers but for the players the, like just imagine sanju samson is on the threshold of a national career sri shant is planning to make a comeback so this will be a very crucial season for them what will happen if the no cricket takes place they will just lose out so we should be having the matches at the first class level down to the local level with the observance of the biosecure protocol to the extent possible it may be difficult to have matches at the local level but at least the first class matches should start otherwise it will be too heavy a cost on the players concerned who might lose the most valuable years of their life after all a player has a very limited shelf life 15 years 20 years well that's all 
So that should not happen. So in this thing, I, I, I feel that you should make the, the board and the uh, authority should try to have the game re resumed at the first class level during the season. Already they are having IPL, but that will be in Dubai. Well, after that, to have the first class cricket back in the country should be their objective. That, that's your answer as a doctor as well, isn't it? Uh, thank you. Uh, when, when, we could, when I was in school and we couldn't play cricket because of the rains and other things, we used to play book cricket. We would open the page of a book and whatever the number of the page was, that was a six, then it was a six. If it was four, it was four and so on. And if you got uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, you're out. Let's move on, Dragon. Thank you so much. I know your cricket is an area which you really love. Uh, but we have we also speaking about curries and cuisine of Kerala. Now, for those who don't know, those who are from outside the state, Kerala is a completely varied cuisine. It's very different from the rest of the country. It's a coastal cuisine. It's a, it's a it's a it's a vegetarian cuisine. It's a meat based cuisine. It's a fish based cuisine because we 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 eat almost everything that happens to move, except of course like the Chinese. We don't eat uh, snakes and things, but otherwise most of the things. So. And we have our own traditional, you know, puta kadila. Puta is something like, I don't know how to describe it for non madhyadis It's a rice-based steamed, uh, steamed, uh, steamed cake. Uh, cake, yes, which is, uh, you know, which comes out of, which is put in a cylinder and steamed. It's a longer cylinder, pipe-like cylinder. It is steamed in that, and then it comes out as with coconuts, uh, coconut sandwiching, coconut acting is like a sandwich. In between, it's, it's delicious. And it's even eaten with kadala. Kadala is chenna, the black chenna uh, that's uh, that's uh, uh, that we we eat in the north. So it's lovely, but you eat puto with uh, with with bananas also. With uh, and then we have so many. You heard about uh, fish molly, which is so famous, which has got a story of its own, which I'm sure Raghavan will tell you. There's avial vegetarians. It's galore, you know, avial. Pachadi, pulicheri, manga curry, toran. Toran is any vegetable that's fr that's that's sort of made up of oil. I, I think Raghavan will tell us. Then there is fish curry with mango, fish curry with tamarind, fish curry with uh, our own version of a uh, of a uh, of, of a sava uh, a fruit called um, kodampuli. I don't know what its name is. Maybe I think it's called kamboj. But kodampuli is, is is a very very sour sort of thing, and fish with that is lovely. And then, of course, there is a sadhya, the onam sadhya. Umpteen number of accompaniments. Uh, that is the Aran Mula sadhya, which is laid out after the Aran Mula race, which is particularly special. It comes with uh, rice and davial and injam puli and, uh, and, and, and all these things I mentioned and many others. And then there are, there are the savouries, the sarkaravarti, which is actually banana fried, cut into slightly larger pieces, fried, and then it is again, uh, you know, uh, fried in jaggery, so it's sweet, savory, and then of course there is a banana fry, which is delicious. My mouth is watering, so I'm not going to speak more. And and I think it'll go on for uh, uh, endlessly. Uh, Raghav, when you said you would speak about uh, the Talasheri QC, why uh, uh, There are so much of uh, uh, possibilities here, isn't it? So, but why are you? Why? What is special about Talasheri? I, I thought of talking about Talisheri because that sort of uh, uh, characterizes the discussion we are having today. When oh, you wow, yes. well, go from cricket to spices to curries, Talisheri has a stays as a common uh, platform. Uh, when I say Talisheri, I, I, I mean the Malabar as a whole. But right. because cricket originated in Talisheri, I thought that will be the area from which you can start. Wonderful. But as you said, that uh, it's a varied and it's an eclectic taste that the Malayalis have when it comes to food. When you see the landscape, you find it dominated by uh, rivers, so fish, rice, coconut. So you'll expect that the the food habits will linger around the rice, uh, fish, and coconuts. But that's not so. Probably that is because of the fact that Keralaites have been in uh, touch with the uh, outside world from time immemorial, trading of spices. So if you look at it, you look at the North Kerala cuisine. You have something called the biryani, which is coming. Of course, biryani is uh, uh, now that's universally known. Uh, people all over the country, maybe all over the world, take it. But what happens is that this is essentially a Persian dish which has come to Kerala very olden times. And it's a mix of the Arab cooking and the Kerala spices, which is what makes the Talichari cuisine so, so unique. Find the sort of rice that is used there is not the Basmati rice, it's something called the Kaima rice, it's a smaller sort of uh, variant of rice. So this is what makes it unique. So you have a very meat-based cuisine which comes out of that place. You, you have delicacies made out of egg, mutamala. You have delicacies made with uh, 
uh, sweets, uh, unnakai made out of uh, banana. And most importantly, it is telichery which has given us the first top class bakeries in the state. As a child growing up in Cochin, I, I was born and brought up at Cochin Bakery. Uh, so I'm sure you'd also remember that uh, that uh, shop which was there on the MG Road, a landmark. I, I thought that everyone else got the same quality cakes as we in Cochin were privileged to get. It was only when I went to Calicut I found that no, it's a privilege that is not given to many till Cochin Bakery opened their branch in Calicut. So cricket and cakes are sort of the uh, contribution of telichery for the rest of the state along with the fact that you get a mix of uh, the Arabian food with the Kerala spices added to it. Look at it, the biryani is more popular or, or the varieties of biryani in Telicheri then there's a slightly different and distinctive biryani which is there in Calicut. Well, it, 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 it must be a sort of a flavor that is different but both are extremely tasty. When you come to Calicut, you have something called the halwa, sweet meat. So when I was looking for a name for my book, uh, which is based on Calicut, I, I, I did not have to go further than Calicut halwa. That's the unique taste that there's even a sweet meat street in Calicut. It sells the various sorts of halwa. When you come from further, sir, you'll see a place near Cochin, uh, very near to Parur called Manjali, which is also famous for <laughs> biryani and halwa. So this again shows that Malayalis or Keralites rather, they, 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 they have, uh, they are very accommodating as far as food is concerned. They are willing to experiment and try out. And when you come to Central Kerala, sir, as you said, the beauty of the uh, Syrian Christian cooking, as you call it, the mappas, the molis, the stews, they all Appam. come in. <laughs> Appam, idiyappam, and we have the traditional Kerala sadhya also. So it, it's, uh, in Kerala sadhya, you have, as you said, the toran, which is any vegetable, which is well, well sort of made with coconut, it becomes a toran. You have aviyal, you have erisheri, you have something called olen, which I, I haven't seen a, a version of olen in any other cuisine anywhere else in the country. So, it, it, and we have breakfast, we said, uh, sorry, you mentioned about putta, you have idiyapam, another, uh, another this thing. You can have it with plantain, you can have it with karla, and it's seen as a perfect this thing. This putta karla is considered by the dietitians as a perfect combination. You have proteins, you have the carbs coming in, so it's a perfect meal. So that, and finally, sir, it, uh, in the 1950s, I'm told, by my father that there used to be a restaurant called Chinese restaurant in Cochin. Those days there are hardly any Chinese here. And when the 62 war happened, it changed its name to Malaya restaurant. <laughs> Old timers will remember the Malaya restaurant yeah. just next to St. Albert's College in uh, Banerjee Road. Almost everyone had their first meal during those stages at the Malaya restaurant. That is, can be called as the uh, flag bearer for the new varieties of all the Chinese restaurants that are found up all over the uh, state. And that shows that it, it's a, um, the food habits are quite eclectic, willing to experiment. And that's why we are uh, a host to a great, varied type of cooking and cuisines throughout the state. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Raghavan. Uh, Munir points out uh, that Telicheri is the land of the three C's. Cricket, cakes, and circus. We missed out on circus, but I don't think we should uh, spend time on cricket. That, that's a whole, uh, I think, uh, uh, whole episode by itself. Um, and then he goes on to say that Telicheri cuisine has closer ties with Persian cuisine than Arab cuisine. Uh, Muttamala has a por Portuguese origin. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, questions for you. Why is it called the... Th these days you spoke of biryani and you see these shops saying Talasheri Dham Biryani. Now, what is Tarasheri Dham Biryani? I thought there were a contradiction in terms of, uh, you know, Tarasheri South and Dham being North Indian. There's Tarasheri Dham Biryani. And there's also these days I hear about, you know, Kuliki Sarbat. Tarasheri Kuliki Sarbat. I don't know what Tarasheri Kuliki Sarbat. Kuliki, I know, means shake. Sarbat is Sarbat. But why Tarasheri Kuliki Sarbat? Uh, and Kuliki Sarbat. It's like, you know, uh, James Bond saying uh, his... Uh, uh, you know, what is it? It should be served, shaken, not stirred. So it's like that. This should be shaken. Uh, your, your, your comments on that? I, I'd just like to say, I know, I, I, I cannot understand this Talasheri Dham Biryani because I suppose for anyone to sell a good food product, you put the prefix Talasheri, it would sell. That's the reputation of the place so far as good food is concerned. Uh, so th th that's one thing. Again, for Sarbat, I would just like to add one thing here. As a person who studied in Calicut, I would say the best sarbat in the state comes in Calicut. There's something called the milk sarbat, which uh, you, if you want to go to a shop, it's a very small shop uh, in Kannur Road. You have to wait for at least 20 minutes 
to clear the queue and reach up to the shopkeeper who will make the combination of the milk and the sub and a very refreshing drink. So you, you have all types of <laughs> food which is there in the various parts. And the point is that generally it is healthy and generally uh, you, you find that it's varied and extremely tasty. What is Kurimanti? But before that, there is a very important point from Sankita Bhattagar. She says, can you please highlight the influence of Ayurveda on Kerala cuisine? Very interesting question. I, I remember when I was young, we had this, uh, you know, uh, we were basically till I was like 14, 15, it was only Ayurveda. We never went to an English doctor. And there were these lovely uh, Arishtams, uh, Deshamula Arishtam. And then there was this um, uh, Ajamamsa Rasayanam, which is a Rasayanam made out of uh, Ajamamsam as go sheep meat. So what, I mean, they are not really cuisine, but then what is the link between Ayurveda and cuisine? Like Ayurveda, basically, Ayurveda is a sort of system of medicine where uh, you have a balance between the three systems. So it, it, it shows that the, uh, whenever there, there's a treatment, it, it, it's mandatory that the person should follow a particular diet. So Ayurvedic diet is different from the regular diet. So they will uh, say that these diseases should be like, like they don't recommend the use of uh, chilies in the diet so that it, it, it's a lesser load or, or the gastric uh, juice production is lesser. So it tries to bring out the balance within the body. So Ayurveda is essentially vegetarian. The diet is essentially vegetarian. The quantity of food is certainly limited and it is rather bland. So it sort of it helps to cleanse out the system. Basically, the, whatever the wonderful food that you have, ultimately they add to a sort of, you know, they add to cholesterol, you know, they add to the various other things that can lead to various diseases. The first and foremost is to have your system clean. So Ayurvedic food, generally, Ayurvedic cuisine is not like that, but what are the food recommended during Ayurveda treatment is ensure to see that the body is cleansed of all the ill effects of eating the various foods which can be damaging to a body. One, two, to keep the body in such a condition so that there's a perfect balance between the various systems, which is the base of the Ayurvedic treatment. Uh, uh, two points which has been pointed out here. One is that Dr. Hormi Saragan uh, tells us that uh, uh, he's been told that the Chinese chili, Chinese chili chicken was actually invented in the Malaya restaurant that you referred to. <laughs> Is that possible? Okay. Uh, that, that, but before that, let me also point out that uh, Sangeeta's question is very appropriate. Sangeeta Bhatnagar is a very noted author. Uh, she is also uh, an expert on food. So thank you, Sangeeta, for that. Uh, any 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 response to Dr. Harmis's point that uh, uh, ch chili chicken is actually in the I certainly in agree with the, what uh, Harmis has said because if if you be if you go to China or even to Singapore and go to a Chinese restaurant there, what you have there is totally different from what we have as Chinese food here. Because what Malaya restaurant succeeded in doing was to make the Chinese food adaptable to the Malayali palate. So yes, chili chicken of the sort that we have here would certainly not be there in China or, or in any other part of the world. So at that point of time, if you remember, so during the 1915, Chinese population was basically in Bengal. You had those uh, pockets in Calcutta where they had a particular type of Chinese cooking. I think it's a tangdi or something that they uh, you know, call that. So that is, is different from what you have in uh, um, Kerala. So Kerala, the Chinese cooking has been fathered by the great chef in Malaya restaurant. Who could understand what the Malayali palate wanted? It was not for international clientele. It was just for the local clientele that the food was made. So I would, I, 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 I'm sure that you won't get this form of Chinese chili chicken anywhere else in the world. But in those who have been, but for those who have been taught by the great cook in Malaya restaurant, we have what a lot of connections with China, especially in cuisine. We have the china chutti, which is a Chinese wok, and we call it ch ch china chutti means the Chinese frying pan. Uh, 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 and we have the Chinese fishing net, the China Vala. So there are a lot of Chinese connections. Maybe that's uh, uh, the links between China and Kerala. Uh, the bad days to have an episode on it, but perhaps we should think about it. But before we move on, what is Kurimandi? I've seen this Kurimandi everywhere, but I've not really understood it. Uh, what is that? Is that a form of dumb biryani? I'll add, uh, admit my ignorance about that, sir. Kurimandi is something which New I wouldn't want to venture into something which I haven't yet had this place. It is quite, there are two types which have recently come. One is a Taimur Kachi Biryani and the second is a Kurimandi Biryani, which is which is seen popularly. I I, I wouldn't be able to comment on that because I haven't yet had the, the thing of having it. So, uh, Actually, uh, 
uh, uh, Dr. Raghavan, I feel so happy that you're not able to answer at least one question on, on, on uh, cuisine. But there's an interesting point from Munir who says that uh, dum biryani means uh, in the final stages of cooking, the west is heated from both above and below. Uh, Kerala Chinese is a very spicy original Chinese cuisine is not spicy. Thank you so much, Munir, for that. Before I move on, what do you think are going to be the innovations in, in uh, Kerala cooking? Malabar cooking uh, in the future with, you know, with all, all this uh, takeaways, uh, COVID coming in and uh, finding the fun of eating in a restaurant. Uh, what are going to be the innovations? Where is the kitchen going to disappear from a, uh, from a yes. Kerala household? Yes. 30 uh, years from now, you'll have houses without kitchens. Yes. And our grandchildren will ask us, what is a kitchen? Would that oh. happen? Certainly, sir. We are going in that direction. If you go to, uh, let's, let's take Singapore, for example. The kitchen is hardly used there. Husband and wife get out of the house, they go to the food court, have their breakfast, they have lunch at the workplace, come back, meet in the food court, have dinner and come back. So kitchen is hardly ever used in a Singapore household. So the similar thing would gradually happen in Kerala because we, as a, uh, when I went to Trivandrum in the early 90s, 70s, there hardly any hotel except for Masket. One or two restaurants there. But if you go to Trivandrum now, the place is full of restaurants. Cochin always had that. And even the smallest place, you drive from Ernaklam to Kotem, for example, you find the places, uh, the entire road is dotted with restaurants on both sides, serving all sorts of vegetarian, non-vegetarian, Chinese, the various combinations that are available there. All this indicates that there's a good clientele for food. So people are eating out more and more. So the kitchen as we see it, as what probably our parents saw it, would gradually disappear. And cooking would be done only for the bare minimal, this thing would be done. As it is for Onam, Vishu and all, we, what do you do? A lot of families who still ask for the sadhya to be catered. So outside catering, the use of uh, institutions like Swiggy, Zomato, takeaways, eating out, all this will be more popular. And we probably would uh, lead the country towards a situation where the kitchen becomes sort of area which is not frequented very commonly. That would be a terrible day. I hope it doesn't happen. I think we should call a hartal against uh, <laughs> against uh, having closing down kitchens you know certainly i mean kitchen is is is, is a we, we should not let that happen a kitchen is what also bonds the family i think and all those lovely food coming out from there there's i don't i anuradha puri telling us that not, not to forget the grand hotel on mg road thank you so much anuradha for that and uh, before i move on um uh, uh uh, let me just point out two things that our next episode is going to be on the 22nd, which is a Saturday. So we'll have people from the uh, more, more uh, people from the Gulf areas on the 22nd of this month, 22nd August, Saturday at 8 p.m. And our guest is going to be Alphonse Kandantanam, former minister in charge of tourism and uh, presently MP. And of course, he's a former IAS officer himself. Alphonse Kandandanan will be uh, talking to us about M Munar and the mountains. The word Malayalam means, Mala means mountains, Aram means rivers. And so Malayalam, the language of Kerala, is the language of the mountains and the rivers. And, um, uh, and Alphonse will speak to us on, on uh, Munar and the mountains. I'm sure it's, it's going to be very interesting. Just thought I'd flag it for you before I, I go on to the next uh, part of it. Uh, uh, which is, uh, that there's a question from uh, I think it's Setu Raman. What are your views on other Far Eastern cuisine from Thailand, Vietnam, and Burma vis-a-vis -vis Chinese? Uh, we thought this was a Kerala-based program, but Kerala has so many links with the Far East. Very quickly, if you can answer that. Yes. Uh, all, all these are unique in their own respects. Thailand, yes, a lot, lot more use of coconut milk, so that makes it uh, particularly tasty for the Malayali palate. You, you have the Indonesian food, again, very similar. You, you have restaurants in uh, Cochin which serve Indonesian food and Malaysian food. Burmese is slightly more different, again, rice-based. So all these are uh, similar to, but distinct from what you see as a Chinese cuisine. So that is what I would say. They are all, if, if you look at a family, you can say that they are cousins of the main Chinese cuisine that comes in. Tasty, yes, definitely. Distinct, different. and But then they have their umbilical cords, the Chinese cooking. That is how Thank you so much. We forgot one important Kerala food, kappa, tapioca. 
Oh, tapioca is our favorite. We have it for breakfast, lunch, dinner. So let's let's have a mention of that also. Kappa is tapioca, cassava. It's it's a lovely food. It's full of starch. We make so much of food. I mean, it's it's so delicious. My mouth is again watering. Raghavan, your take on kappa? <laughs> again, again, another unique one. The kappa fish curry is a combination. Let's say puttu karla, which is which is uh, nutritionally uh, supposed to be a perfect combination. Kappa has a very interesting history. Is that this the cultivation of this was promoted by the Trivandrum royal family as a healthy as a healthy substitute for rice. So this is this is one of those foods which had royal patronage and came in, but. over a period it is at one point it was supposed to be used only by the labor class but now it has again got a celebrity status because a lot of people actually love kappa and fish curry so kappa is uh, unique now you have even kappa biryani going in uh, and kappa with the various commonly i i mentioned about kappa with uh, fish curry but kappa with chamandi chamandi is actually a, uh, grated onions and uh, uh, chilies kappa with chamandi or chutney and then kappa with uh, any sort of uh, uh, meat preparation chicken mutton beef all these are going on but kappa is it it can say, malayalis can safely consider kappa to be a substitute for rice on any day for any meal before you move on before we move on i'm going to launch a protest raghavan i hate calling what we from you know angamali ullu trichur etc used to call uh, kappa erachi calling it kappa biryani is terrible uh, it's bad for biryani it's bad for our food as well don't call it kappa biryani please it's it's very exclusive very special to uh, ernakulam angamali uh, ullu trichur the area i come from it's kappa erchi i mean it's it could be any erchi erchi means meat it could be any any form of meat it could be chicken it could be mutton it could be beef it could be anything it could be pork Uh, but it's kappa. But it's not. Don't let's not call. It's 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 detrimental to both biryani and to what we eat with kappa. Thank you so much. I think we'll move on. We spoke of uh, cuisine, and cuisine leads us to spices. Kerala is famous for its spices. We are the, we are part of the spice coast. Five thousand years ago, I believe, spices was a part of uh, uh, what attracted uh, uh, people to Kerala. And of course, uh, people like uh, uh, Pliny the Elder, Ptolemy, etc., have written about it. now spices there are so many spices in kerala uh, so let me ask a question again to the audience what is the what what is known as the king of spices anybody and the queen of spices the king of spices and the queen of spices anyone you can write your answer and mohit will give you a gift will you mohit oh no i i think anybody in knows god, in the god soon country it's all my <laughs> cardamom somebody has written cardamom uh, yeah and now is that uh, is that the queen or the king well cardamom is uh, not the king of spices the king of spices is that's navya navya that uh, cardamom is not the king of spices cardamom is the queen of spices i'm told the king of spices is our pepper black gold kurumanaga and that's what attracted i think a lot of trade it is what attracted even um, the 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 portuguese to come to kerala and started the the process of uh, you know links with the west through the sea, through the to the cape of good hope so we have so much i mean spices is in our blood and when you spoke about qc uh, in raghavan the emphasis was so much on spices as well we have pepper we have cardamom we have cloves we have uh, cinnamon ginger turmeric nutmeg tamarind Uh, uh, star anise, which is very special to Kerala, I suppose. Curry leaves. Now we don't have a curry. We don't make anything without curry leaves. You know, we don't fry anything without putting curry leaves. And I spoke earlier about karamphuli, which is a very special sour, uh, uh, sour uh, fruit that we add to our fish curries and others. It's called kambuj. It's called the Malabar tamarind. I am told. I'm not quite sure about it. Cumin seeds, vanilla, and of course our own tulsi, uh, the basil leaves. So it's it's tremendous variety uh, uh, is. Uh, Uh, of 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 uh, spices from kerala why do you think ragwan we have this very diversity of spices in such a small bit of land parishuram's uh, you know uh, land a- again the landscape sir kerala is a very unique this thing where the, you have the sea on one side you have the mountains on the other side probably at a, a, at a gap of around 20 25 kilometers a very small strip of land so the western ghats have been home to all sorts of spices from the time immemorial If you look at it, the history says that sort of you mentioned about Pliny, they they had links with the Babylonians, the Assyrians, and then with the ancient Rome also, and definitely Arabia. In fact, it said that Arabians had 
successfully hit the fact that they used to get the spices from Kerala and used to market it as a sort of Arabian produce till the Romans found the route. And every year, sort of 120 ships used to be sent from Rome, which would come here and then making use of the wind conditions and the monsoon, which will buy the spices and go back. So that is probably the, that sort of trade relationship which actually helped Kerala to develop so much, both not just for the food habits, but for the diverse, inclusive culture that the state has today. What it, is your... It's it, it just not uh, the thing that, uh, if, if you look at the history of a country in the north, many things have come through invasion, whereas in Kerala it has come through trade and commerce. So we, we, it, we didn't have any objection to the, the oldest mosque is here, Cheraman, uh, St. Thomas came to Kerala. So all this happened because people came on a friendly, this thing, we talked, we did trade, we did commerce, we saw the different culture, we tried to imbibe what was good from them, and, and we became so inclusive on that. Sir, you were mentioning yesterday about the wonderful reaction uh, that happened in a tragedy took place at Konduti. So you might remember in the 1980s, there was an accident at Periman, the railway accident where the entire train, Island Express, fell into it. And the response, in fact, it was that response that prompted the railway to ensure that the bogey was lifted. So many people died in that thing. So the response of Carolites to a tragedy has always been amazing. Let, let no tragedies happen, but the, the esprit de corps that is shown, the unity that is shown during those times is amazing. It, it, it cannot be replicated anywhere. This is probably the result of the inclusive and the diverse culture that we have from these relationships and uh, contacts that we have had with the other civilizations from time immemorial. Yes, there are contacts with Chinese. Joe Thomas has done a wonderful book to say that there are, so you mentioned about the China Villa and the China Chetti. There are families from Calicut who emigrated all the way to China three or four generations back. So there have been extensive links with the various other parts of the world, which actually led to the Portuguese landing in 1498. Portuguese followed by the Dutch, then the French, and finally the Brits. And then they ruled. If you look at it, uh, the southern Kerala was, was not ruled directly by them. Travancore and Cochin remained separate kingdoms, whereas they deposed of the Zamorin and controlled the entire Northern Kerala, and and that became the Malabar district of the British uh, 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 of the Madras Presidency. So spices have determined the culture, the history of the state, like nothing else says. Uh, that is, Munir points out that Telicheri pepper was considered the best pepper during the colonial period. Anjira Kandi, here Telicheri has the continent's largest uh, cinnamon plantation. But uh, speaking of both cinnamon and pepper. Uh, cinnamon, I think Sri Lanka takes the cake for cinnamon, isn't it? I believe the best quality uh, cinnamon comes from uh, Sri Lanka. Correct me if I'm wrong. And then I spent about seven years working in the UN in Cambodia. And Cambodia has a pepper called Kampot pepper, which is a geo, what do you call it? Geo, um, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it, it is supposed to be one of the best peppers. And they claim it's better than us. Ah, so I used to have these longish <laughs> arguments with them. So what do you say to these two points about cinnamon and pepper? Sir, uh, there are, we certainly feel that uh, the cardamom and the alapi green, uh, as it used to be called, the Malabar pepper uh, and the cinnamon that we produce are certainly a world ranking, top ranking ones. Again, sir, the use of it depends upon the, the palate that consumes it also. Why are these added? These are not the main food. These are added to give a particular flavor to the food. And it depends upon the type that we use for the cooking that is there. So the, certainly all the, all the spices that are produced in the Kerala are of top quality, which is the reason why it has sustained, survived all these years and captured the world market. Even during these times, Spice Board is one of the boards which is doing fantastically well because without spices, you just cannot have cooking taking place. And this also led to a very good oleoresin industry within the state. Yeah. You have to think about that, uh, taking it forward. You have companies like Synthite, you have companies like Plant Lipids, which, which have captured the market worldwide. So th that's the way in which the industry has grown forward on that. And sir, the next point is that the spices in the uh, Western Ghats led to the next step in the plantation industry. That is how the next step, the coffee came from Kurk to Vyanat. And following coffee, tea came to Mal uh, Central Travancore. And the king of everything, as I would say, because the largest area is under that, the rubber came. So uh, that way, the spices have been the forerunner for the rest of the plantations that have come to Kerala as well. Uh, Gopal points out that, uh, what about clove? His mother's favorite, I believe. 
Yes, clothes. And their clothes are medical value as well, isn't it? When you have yeah. toothache, you put clothes in the... the... Yeah, they are medical values. Sir. Uh, rubber. Tea. Tea is what makes Munar so beautiful. And Munar is what Alphonse is going to speak about. And the mountains of Kerala is what Alphonse is going to sp speak about on the 22nd Saturday, uh, 8 p.m., not 7, because he, he, he normally goes out and exercises and things like that. Uh, but, uh, mm, uh, you know, uh, 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 what about rubber? Rubber, I'm, I'm going slightly off the plantation. Rubber is facing a crisis, isn't it? Uh, I believe with the import of rubber, uh, some of the farmers in Canada are facing uh, difficulties. What do you think the future is? So I would just put it like this. When coffee came in, I'm just telling you a bit of history. Yeah. In the 1800s, the coffee in Kurk, uh, uh, the plantation started in Kerala in the 1870s. There are plantations in uh, Wayanad, then the plantation started in Central Travancore. In 1880s, there was a glut of coffee from the Brazilian, this thing which sort of dampened the industry. So there were no takers for coffee. Then they changed to tea. And that was the time when rubber also came in. Rubber became so popular because of the two world wars that happened and its importance as a strategic raw material. And it cannot be grown in, all, in many climates also. So that was the significance of rubber so far as India was concerned, so far as Kerala was concerned. Price of rubber, yes, sir. Now, we had a situation in which the price of rubber, which was 25 rupees a kg, in 2000, 2001, when I was MD of Rubber Marketing Federation, sir, it went up to 250 a kg in 2011. So in 10 years, it increased 10 times. There cannot be a comparative increase at any of these things. But as it happens, and the prices went up because of a huge demand from the largest consumer, which is China. But Chinese economy in the after 2010 slowed down, and China also started planting rubber and cultivating rubber. China did not have any rubber. But in 2000, early 2000, they started on a massive spree of rubber cultivation. So there was an excess supply over demand, which caused the prices to fall. Prices these days are in the range of 130 to 135, which certainly is much lower when you look at the all-time high of 250. So that has led to a lot of people just leaving the plantations untapped. One more reason is that there are a lot of people who don't depend solely on rubber for their livelihood. The second generation, third generation would have moved out. They would be working in the cities. So a lot of people don't need this as a, first, as a sole sustenance or as a sole breadwinner. The prices are certainly low. I, I wouldn't dispute the fact. But when prices are low, you have to take a combination of how can you bring down the cost of production, which is one area which agencies are focusing on to ensure that there is weekly tapping. There can be pooling of tappers to call, form tappers banks so that you don't have to have a full-time tapper yourself, just like what you do with the carpool, the drivers, uh, the drivers clubs. So this is a sort of thing that could be done to bring down the cost of production. Tap once a week, have use a tapper's bank so the cost of production comes down and to encourage self-tapping wherever possible so that the cost of production is kept low and it still remains a viable business. Thank you very much. I think we have been overshooting our time. It's, we thought of one hour, it's about 75 minutes now. But uh, from uh, Houston, I think, no, from Dallas, Roy Arikel uh, from the U.S. says, uh, will it be an exaggeration if you say Amer the American continent was discovered by the cuisine-driven Kerala spices uh, and, uh, uh, and Native Americans got an Indian title? Is that correct? Uh, could we say that? <laughs> Again, I had to confess my ignorance. Though I'd like to believe that. <laughs> no, what, I think what he points out is that Columbus tried to discover India for getting the spices and then he went on and discovered the U.S., mm -hmm. So uh, the discovery of the U.S. is because of Kirla spices. Uh, stretching it a bit, but I think there's a bit of a logic in it, isn't it? Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, before I conclude, uh, you see, when I was young, uh, if I got a cold, or any of us got a cold or a fever, my mother and grandmother used to say that that's because I went somewhere else and drank the water or, or bathed in the water, which was different, uh, say, example, in Chennai uh, than the water at Kerala. So I find this beautiful, uh, this question from, I think it's from Arundhati Puri, who says, absolutely agree that water from Kerala is what makes it all special. Even when I have a simple appam and stew, the taste of the water and the coconut makes it different from what we have in Bangalore and, uh, and Delhi. Is that so, Raghav? So the water definitely makes a difference. So why are the Scotch whiskey so popular? It's a water that is there in Scotland which makes a difference to that. So water definitely adds to the taste of anything that is cooked in. And, and the water that we get in, we're extremely lucky that this is land blessed with rivers. 
which uh, you, you cannot think of any other strip of land which has so many rivers and, and which is so fertile and which is so green. So it, it's, it's for, for this reason that we call it the God's own country. One, uh, well, it's a slightly difficult question if you don't want to answer it, don't answer it. It's MD Varghese who says, are we hearing of the death knell of rubber board? Concerns around the corner. If you don't want to answer it, that's perfect. No, I would say it is not correct. Okay. There are not really concern on that. There are no death knells either for the rubber board or for the rubber industry. And Gopal says that you can feel the difference when you have water, uh, even when you bathe. Very true. Uh, so there we are. Uh, before I conclude, I think it's been a longish thing and I think... Uh, uh, it is. It was worth it. We, we, if you want a formal question and session answer to this, we can. But before that, let me make this uh, people wondering why I'm wearing this sort of a shawl. Let me make it very clear that this was a shawl that uh, Mohit presented to me when last year, I think it was in November or October, I went to Delhi to attend one of his, uh, you know, uh, bus, Ras Se Bana Banaras. Ras Mane Ras Se Bana Banaras. Banaras is made of Ras. Uh, uh, that was a program which brought Benares Varanasi to Delhi. And then he asked me to speak. I think I was one of the first speakers. And then he gave this to me uh, as before I was speaking. I, I thought this was the most appropriate. He calls it a gamcha, isn't it? What do you call it in Delhi? Yeah, it's called gamcha. Here gamcha. So yeah. it just turns out to be red in color. But then it's not that I have any, any difference of opinion anyway. So, but I thought I'll, I'll, this is why I'm wearing this shawl. Because uh, he gave it to me. Uh, uh, it's been a very interesting session, uh, Dr. Raghavan. Uh, uh, if you, you not only know a lot, uh, you know so much about cricket, about cuisine, about spices and rubber. You are able to express it so wonderfully well. You keep the audience uh, you know, uh, 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 enlivened. You keep us on our toes. And you kept me on my toes because uh, I had to be careful about the questions I asked you. And you were able to answer. You answered almost everything. Thank you so much. Before I hand over the mic to you, to, to Mohit and Aditi, uh, let me say a big thank you to, to Raghavan, a big thank you to Mohit and Aditi, and a big thank you to everybody who was present here. I think it was a very, I mean, it was a very energetic session for me. I don't know how you guys found it, but I think I, I, I feel very enlivened now uh, because of Raghavan and because of all your questions and because of this wonderful audience. Thank you so much. Again, I'm closing my, my part of it by remembering uh, those who died in the air crash, those who are lying injured still, those who helped them, and those who have died at uh, Rajamala in Idiki district. Some of them are still buried. Uh, let's pray for them. Uh, over to you, uh, uh, to you, Mohit, and then- Thank uh, you very much, Mr. Joseph and Dr. Raghavan. It was truly like traveling across the vertical state of Kerala, and as you call the Malava, the Malay, and there's so many stories that we look forward in this series, and of course, uh, our next session is going to be as interesting uh, and we will cover up some more facts. But while the culture and the heritage is being preserved in the, in the, in the, in the state of Kerala, Aditi, as the museum director of Kerala Museum, is playing a very vital role um, with all, what all can happen. And if you ever happen to go to Cochin, you should stay and be there and spend time at the museum. And for that, Aditi will have to introduce to what all are the possibilities Aditi, over to you. Um, so thank you all a lot. Um, I think this was a very, very exciting session. Uh, we covered everything that's so dear to um, Malayalis. I think I can tell you that, um, you know, my, my um, husband's mother-in-law who was crazy about cooking has left a legacy of recipes. And, uh, you know, she used to sit and listen to the radio um, because she was crazy about cricket. And uh, those days, all you could hear, uh, you know, uh, was on the radio about the commentary that you're talking about. And uh, that was a, it was amazing that this lady who was so into cooking was also so crazy about cricket. And if the cricket match um, commentary was on where nobody was allowed to speak. And I thought that was a great uh, family to marry into, you know, that the, the woman uh, of the house is not only a fantastic cook, great at economics in the kitchen and wants to listen to cricket commentary. So yeah, that was, you brought back some really nice memories of uh, our Amama. Um, I think uh, when it comes to the museum, we've been here for 35 years, 
almost every school child in the city has been to the museum uh, and uh, seen the sound and light show. Um, when our founder set it up, the idea was that there should be a space to um, enjoy history, a subject that was considered dry and, uh, you know, not so interesting. And he set up the sound and light show to bring people to the subject in a gentle and interesting and fun way. And I think today, as a museum in Cochin, we're looking at how we can look at history through a contemporary lens, because that is what the whole history uh, sound and light show even does. It, it shows to people Kerala and Kerala's, you know, the influences that have come and everything that you've spoken about today resonates so much with that. Um, I think that's so important to our identity here that, uh, you know, we see and it's evidenced through all of these uh, uh, traces that are left in our cuisine, in our culture, in our uh, everything from our clothes to it's so it's very interesting that you're wearing this scarf today and you're, you know, <laughs> I think uh, that's a sign that, you know, Malayali is ready to don this uh, completely foreign uh, Having said that, I'm half Bengali, so Gamcha is very much, uh, <laughs> very much uh, something that I would uh, know. So yeah, so I think it's been a very exciting session. I th I would really like to thank both of you, um, Dr. Raghavan. We've seen you running uh, on the streets of Cochin, and the rain I'm sure doesn't deter you uh, with the run. Uh, so I think just like you all said. Uh, during this time when it's so difficult to process all of this uh, one tragedy after the other, um, I think coming together to discuss things that are dear to us, that enliven, that bring us comfort is very important. And uh, I think this session really did that for me uh, and for many of us who I see that the, your audience has had so many great comments coming in and I think it's something that's been very, very successful, very, very nice uh, evening that we've had together. So thank you all, uh, especially people who've taken the time to come and listen to all of us here. I think it's been really nice. Thank you very much, Aditi. With this, we sign off to a lovely, beautiful evening here. Have a lovely Sunday um, dinner at home. Try cooking, trying something that you just heard. I've been drooling about it and I've been dreaming about it. Uh, it's truly fascinating. We all will meet again on 22nd. Meanwhile, you can uh, follow the page of City Book Leaders as well as the Kerala Museum. Or, or even you can follow Mr. M.P. Joseph's page because there's a lot of information that you can see. And for our lovely host who did it and to our, such a dynamic and uh, uh, fast-paced uh, guest, I must say. Keep running, sir. And... Bless everyone out here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aditi. Thank you, Ridhima. Thank you, Girish, and all the other colleagues who could join in. Take out your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Raghavan. Thank you, sir. Thank you, you very much. Very